who's used the lip balm already. <laughs> Just to remind you that we're supposed to flourish. Do you like your gift? We think it's amazing. So I have a, a group of girls here and they all have something in common. They're all my friend. Whether they want to be my friend or not, <laughs> I've decided they were, they, they're all part of our Hope Church staff team. If you're part of our staff team at Hope Church, you're my friend. It's like we're just going to be friends because we see each other all the time, every day. So we may as well just be friends as well as we build God's kingdom. But you know, we're going to talk about something tonight that's so important. God wants us all to flourish, right? And what we're going to talk about can determine whether we flourish or not, and that is friendships. It is so important that we have good friends in our lives, and I can see everybody's like, ouch, you know, because it's the one thing that can determine whether we step into the fullness of what God has for us or not. So we're saying we need friendships on purpose for a purpose. To be on purpose means you're intentional. We're not just casually friends with whoever. We're actually intentional with who we're friends with. And then for a purpose, for God's purposes, because God connects us with each other for a purpose. And just want to remind everyone and let those who are new to our sisterhood know that we have a purpose. We don't just have sisterhood because we have nothing else to do tonight. It's obviously awesome to be here and to be in this atmosphere of faith, but our purpose is to lift up the name of Jesus. So at sisterhood, in case you wondered, it's all about Jesus. And then to place value on womanhood. Hence all the flowers and pink things, and to make a difference. So that's, that's our purpose as a sisterhood. We lift up the name of Jesus, we place value on womanhood, and we make a difference. I like that. <laughs> and it's so important you know, that we know what our purpose is and why God's connected us together. Amos 3 verse 3 is one of my favorite verses. It's always been. It says, can two walk together without agreeing where to go. And as believers, we are on a path that leads to heaven. And we need to make sure that we have good friends that we do life with that's on the same path as we are on, and that they don't drag us onto their path. Or, Of course, we need to evangelize, and we need to be friends with people who need Jesus, but we need to make sure that we have friends that we can do life with as we, as we build God's kingdom. And I was sharing this morning, it's, it's years ago, it's long ago, but I had a friend that I really loved spending time with. She was fun, it was always awesome to be with her, but somehow we always ended up gossiping. And it's not something I ever did anywhere else, but when me and her were together, there'd be some form of talking negatively about someone else. And that's so bad. It doesn't honor God. It will hold you back. You'll never thrive and flourish if, if we fall into that trap of gossip because God just does not honor that. And I started feeling so convicted. But I also valued a friendship so much. And I almost feared losing a friendship, you know. And then when I spoke to her and said to her, I really feel convicted. We shouldn't talk about other people like this. She didn't respond the way I hoped she would. I was hoping she would say, I feel the same, and we just pray together and put it behind us, but she then just rejected me, um, even removed me as a friend on Instagram. <laughs> you know how it goes, so you're like, oh, well, uh, but I made the right decision, definitely, and as hard as it sometimes is, we need to be very intentional, so that's what this talk is all about. We think it's important, and I'm going to ask Megan the first question, Megan, what does a, a good sisterhood friendship look like for you? Um, for me, that question makes me think of a situation that happened not so long ago where my character was really attacked and I was 
doubting who God called me to be and who I am in Him. And I'm just so grateful for friends, sisterhood friends that actually care about me. Um, so the next day, while I was like, oh my word, is this me? Is this actually me? I could go to my close friends and say, hey, listen, this is what's being said about me. This is what they're saying about me. Is this true? Um, and when I couldn't stand up for myself, they were like, no, uh -uh, that's not you. Um, this is who God's called you to be. This is how we see you. This is how everyone else sees you. So don't worry, like that's not you. Um, and just saying this makes me think of Pietri. She's my best friend. Um, she's currently in Zambia and we've got some photos up there. And this one in the bottom right um, was actually in Zambia when we went on the outreach last year. And she's the kind of person where I know I can call her, message her, send her a DM, I don't know. <laughs> um, and she'll answer me day or night, and she's always there for me, always keeping me strong, even if I feel a little shaky. So yeah, that's yeah, good we, we all need friends that will tell us what God says about us and to encourage us. Because we have an enemy, Satan, and he's called the accuser of the brethren or the sisterhood. <laughs> he does accuse, and he can only lie. He's a liar. So we all will go through times where we feel our characters are being attacked, where Satan will lie about us. So we do need those friendships. Claire. Claire also oversees our counseling ministry here at Hope Church. She's amazing. Um, Proverbs 12, verse 26 says, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. So we need to really be intentional about choosing our friends because it affects our destinies. And what, what tips can you give us to make sure we choose our friends carefully? That's a good question. I think we could all uh, do with having some tips on how to choose friends carefully. My first um, go-to is prayer. Um, I remember when I first became a Christian and I was in that transition of wanting to serve God wholeheartedly, but still had so many worldly friends that wanted to party and carry on. And it wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. I wanted to serve God completely. And um, it was actually quite amazing how eventually they just sort of tended to flutter out of my life. And my good friends stayed solid. And I, from there, I just made the most incredible friends. I was so blessed to walk with amazing women and small groups who've spoken about it and things like that. It's just been so empowering walking with people that feel the same way you do, want to honor God the way you do, want to walk with God the way you do, um, and their values. And that for me is what's important. Pray for godly friends and, and pray with them and then be that friend that you want them to be. So however you want them, treat them that way. And generally, the same comes back to you. So true, hey? The only way to have a friend is to be one. I, I know so many people feel they have so many friends already and enough friends, and then when we invite them to a small group, we get responses like, Oh, but I've got enough friends. I don't need more friends. Of course, it's not just about you having friends. It's also about you giving into other people's lives. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe you have your sisters or you just feel you've got so many friends. But that doesn't mean you have the right friends just because you have a lot of friends and you're not lonely. Proverbs 18 verse 24 says, A man or a woman of many companions may come to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother or a sister. So sometimes it can even be better to just have one close friend than have a lot of friends. And Claire, what would you say are some essential qualities to look for in friendships if we want friends that will stick with us? I like that question because sometimes you wonder to yourself, how, how do you choose friends, you know? Um, is it because you've got things in common and you enjoy the same thing? Yes, it is, but for me, because I always want to grow in my relationship with God and I constantly want to get there, you need friends that are willing to walk that path with you. 
that are going to stick with you, that have the same values as you. And what I look for is the fruits of the Spirit, because that will tell you very clearly if they are. So the love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the patience, the understanding, all of those make such a good friend. And if you've got that in friends, you've got it made. Very, very good. I love it. You are very good friends. You definitely have the fruits of the Spirit. Claire used to be a hairdresser before she joined our full-time staff team. You've been full-time almost for 10 years, hey? Almost 10 years you've been. It's actually incredible. Let's give her a hand. That's we all need a Claire in our lives. <laughs> Megan, what have you learned just from having healthy, good friendships? Um, so I think for me, when I was younger, um, I say younger because I'm still young. But, um, but we're when all I was, still young, man. <laughs> yes, I mean we're all still young. <laughs> um, and during high school, I had this mindset of, oh, but I just make friends so much easier with guys, and you know, there's no drama there. And I hear a few amens, and yes, same. <laughs> so I know I'm not alone. Um, and I must say, having that mindset completely robbed me mm. of what I have now, um, which I'm so grateful for, which is just this group of ladies that are there for me, that stand with me, that I can stand with. Um, mm. And this makes me think of my incredible small group. I've got a photo of them going to come up as well. Um, and, like, I love them so much. And we all just build each other up. And this past week, actually, I was a bit anxious, and I was like, oh, no. So the first thing I did when I went to Smork, I was like, hey, can you please pray for me? And then my one friend just hugged me, and she's like, okay, let's pray. And as soon as she was done praying, I wasn't anxious anymore. I was like, okay, cool, let's go. Um, so yeah, just surround yourself with such incredible godly ladies that can build you up. Yeah, I love that. If you're not yet in a small group, definitely consider joining a small group. You'll never fully experience everything that God wants to do in your life here at Hope Church if you're not part of a community or of, of a small group. Small groups really are the heart of our church, and we would love for you to be part of a, a group. We've got sisterhood small groups. We've got family small groups. There's so many groups. Go onto our website or go to our welcome desk and find out more, or just start a group. <laughs> Maybe you're already a group of friends hanging out together, and one, we can co-lead. Two can just say, hey, we'll lead a small group. Come chat to us. We would love for you to do that. You know, friendships can be complicated, eh? And sometimes friends can actually let us down, disappoint us, even betray us. But there is a friend that will never let us down, and his name is Jesus. So Soraya is not just on the panel to smile and look pretty, <laughs> although she'd do a good job if she just smiled the whole night. <laughs> Tell us about your relationship with Jesus. Marinette, I've experienced that Jesus wants to be our friend and he gives us an open invitation, you know, to start a friendship with him. And I remember being in grade nine when I gave my life to Jesus and I'm now 27 years old and I've experience, you know, that um, just through making it a priority to put Jesus first in my life, he started becoming my best friend. And how I really enjoy, you know, just building relationship with Jesus is making it a priority every day to start my day yeah. with Jesus. I don't know where I would have been if I, if I didn't do that. And, you know, just started investing into my friendship with Jesus every day. And so, you know, just really blesses me and encourages me so much to spend time with Jesus, reading my Bible, praying, and then worshiping Him to some of my favorite songs. And just this week, I've actually experienced, um, as I was having my quiet time, um, I was reading a total different verse, and I'm listening to this one song, and all of a sudden, there's this one word in the song that catched my attention. It was Emmanuel. And as I just, you know, started meditating on this word, I realized, 
okay. It just felt in that moment, God saying, hey, Suraya, I'm with you. And so, you know, the, those are the kind of things that sort of happens when we start friendship with Jesus. We, we find a friend in him that encourages us when we're weak, that's there to guide us when we need guidance. And I was also reminded of the song's lyrics when I thought about friendship with Jesus. And it says, who am I that you are mindful of me? that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. So amazing. Maybe that's where you need to start, by making Jesus your best friend. There's no reason any of us need to leave here tonight completely lonely because if we only have Jesus, we have enough. We have everything that we need. And God is so serious about friendships and having a relationship with us that he sacrificed his one and only son, Jesus, so that he could have that intimate relationship with us where we speak to him and he speaks to us and we just do life together. But thank you so much. That was amazing, girls. Give him a hand. <laughs>